What up, what up, welcome back to the channel, I'm Odai J and we are locked in. This is day two of recapping the cage on Netflix, and we just seen Taylor challenge Ibrahim. I don't know if he's prepared for this, but hell, when you ain't got nothing to lose and your back's against the wall, you gotta go for it. You gotta swing for the fences. In this case, we're trying to swing for a knockout. But before we jump into this and we break down episode two, if you like the drama, if you like the fighting, if you like the grit, the grind to get where you're at from the situation you're in, then I think you might want to watch The Cage over on Netflix. So if you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. We're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is day two of Recapping The Cage, episode two. Right off the bat, George St. Pierre called at the end of episode one. Now we're going to do some training. Taylor gets here, he sees a statue of him outside of his land. See, what George St. Pierre wants to do is get him away from everything. The city life, nothing. The only thing you're gonna be stripped down to is MMA training. Whether that's eating, training, swimming, training, eating, training, everything has to do with training. That's how you become a champion. They take Taylor out to the woods and it's nonstop training, as I already mentioned. 12 hour days from cardio to grappling to punching to cardio again to swimming to eating healthy. You got to do it. Now, they're learning all the tricks of the trades. As you know, GSP Hall of Fame, you get a statue. You got to do something in life. And Taylor, he's trying to get a statue. But right now, forget the statue, focus on the training. They even have film study. As I mentioned, this is 24 seven. You wake up, you start training. By the end of the night, you're worn out, you're beat. But this is gonna build your endurance. So while they're actually watching older fights and looking at different techniques, we see Taylor doze off. Is he mentally prepared, physically prepared for this? No, but that's where GSP is trying to get him to. Back at the gym, Boss is starting to lose his top fighters. And this is because they're not getting the opportunities they wanted to. Everything has been scaled back, so they're looking at other opportunities to either make money, get more promotion, go spar with different type of athletes, because Boss is doing what he can, but at the same time, no one's progressing. He didn't want to give Taylor an opportunity, so all the fighters that were above him, his pro fighters, they're like, hey, we want a chance to go pro as far as the UFC. We want a chance for belts, and we're not getting that here. So Boss, he's losing all of his quality. It's the same old thing. You know, you get tired of eating that same thing for lunch every day. That's what this is. Different tactics, same training all day. You wake up, cock a doo doo, -doo get in that ring, get in the cage. It's all day, nonstop. But this is what it takes, determination. You really got to block everything out. But also what they're doing, they're recording stuff so they can release a little bit of footage. Okay, Taylor, he's ready. He's doing it. This is how he's evolving. Ibrahim sees all the chatter, all the talk, all the clips from Taylor training and his manager's like, oh, this is good. Now we got to make an announcement because remember your managers, all they're trying to do is get some money out of it. But Ibrahim saying, there's not going to be a fight. Forget that. Yeah, he did some training, but I'm not fighting no amateur because he knows if he loses this, it's all bad for him. But this guy is gaining recognition and fame, basically clout chasing is what they would call it nowadays off of Ibrahim's name. Even George St. Pierre goes online. He has an interview on a national MMA podcast telling them, yeah, Ibrahim, he's scared. That's why he's hiding. Because if he was such a badass, he would fight Taylor, knock him out, get it over with, keep it pushing, go defend his belt against someone else. But he's scared to fight. And GSP knows he's been training Taylor. So he's thinking, yeah, we got one up on him. We got high class elite training over here. Now, we got Bilal and Nico. These are Taylor's friends. Now, Bilal on the left, of course, he's overexcited. He's like helping out around the gym. He gets the talent and everything. Nico, he's a fighter also. But right now, the focus is primarily on Taylor. Now, they all been saying, we've been seeing your clips. We've been seeing them go viral. We've seen GSP talk about you. Man, this is huge. And someone puts together a fake flyer of Ibrahim versus Taylor. And they're like, man, that would be crazy if this actually happens. So it looks like our moment is there. We just got to make sure we're ready for that opportunity. Taylor makes it back to the gym. The viral sensation, his crew, they like, man, welcome back. Welcome back. But Taylor knows what the ultimate goal is. And that's to fight Ibrahim. 
we just looking for a coach right now. Nico's talking about he'll do it. Then he goes and talks to Elena, and she's like, listen, promise me you'll win this. And he's like, I'll win it. Now, when Boss comes over, Boss still isn't paying him any attention. Hey, seeing you went viral, what's the next step? And Taylor's saying, just training right now. So Boss, he still downplays it. Now, in order for this fight to happen, of course, there needs to be contract signed. He's sitting down with Bilal and Nico, and they're talking about it. Nico's saying, man, just sign it. Even Bilal's saying, well, all that contract stuff, it's just blah, 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 mumbo jumbo. When you don't have anything and you're trying to look for a come up, you sign almost anything without reading it. Now, Taylor does mention he should probably get a lawyer, but they're like, man, you don't have any money for a lawyer to look over. So Taylor goes ahead and signs it because some money is better than no money, but this is how they screw people over when you don't read the contract because you need the money. Taylor gets home after signing this contract. Now, him and Ibrahim, they're going to get in this ring. They're going to make it happen. But when he gets home, his mother Isabella is here with her boyfriend Regis. And what he's saying is, listen, you see your mom, she needs help around here. So for that fight, I want you to throw it. In the second round, it's real easy. You know, you already don't have anything. You'll get some money off of it. Get in the ring and in the second round, throw the fight. And then we can make some money. We're going to bet the house on you losing and we'll be good to go. But you can see that Taylor, he isn't feeling, he isn't confident in this. And he looks at his mom and he's wondering, you're really going to let this guy tell me this when I've told you this is my dream to fight? Taylor goes to the gym to blow off some steam after hearing his mother and Regis want him to throw the fight. So he's upset, but of course he's thinking about saving his mom and everything that he has to do. When Dallas gets here, he tells Dallas straight up, if you're here to tell me I'm scared and I'm not ready, get out of here. I'm still fighting. But Dallas said, that's not what I'm here for. I actually want to be in your corner. I actually want to help you do this because Dallas sees that there's potential, but this is also a personal game because he's losing fighters at his gym. So it's a win-win for both because Taylor definitely will need an actual coach in his corner. Now it's time for the official weigh-ins. They go in here, weigh-in goes smoothly. But as soon as Ibrahim gets done, Dallas already told him he's going to try to get in your face. He tries to rush over to Taylor, but they block him. Taylor's like, I'm right here. It is what it is. And you know how Ibrahim talks. Oh, you're not ready for no fight with me. Oh, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take you out. But hey, this is MMA fighting. Anything goes. Starting to see Elena and Taylor get closer. She's here. And we already know she's been helping him out with fighting. But we start to hear a little bit about her and how she was raised. Of course, her family would wish she would have picked a sport that wasn't as violent, less likely to get hurt. But this is where her passion is. And her and Taylor, they have a lot in common as far as the fighting and maybe their family not wanting them to actually be in to MMA. But we're going to see where this relationship goes because we know every hero needs a love interest. While everyone's getting prepared to fight, Taylor's in the back warming up. Elena, she's out here. Now she's doing a uh, 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 a one, two step and she's out here throwing them things. But then the rear naked choke. She chokes the girl out, makes her tap and she wins her bout. Now, we got to make sure that Taylor can win because if so, this would be two for two for Dallas and his gym. So things are looking good for us right now. We head out to the ring. It's time to get focused. We got one goal, and that's to win this damn fight. All the hype behind it, all the pressure behind it, all the stressors, his mom, Reed just wanted him to throw it in the second round. Man, there's a lot on Taylor's mind, but we need to drown it out and get focused. They hop in the ring, ding, 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 it's on. Remember, Ibrahim, he's been doing this for a while. He's defending his belt. He gets in here and they throwing him. Well, Ibrahim's throwing him at first. Right now, it ain't looking good for Taylor. We like, man, he really is inexperienced. He really doesn't have what it takes at this point. Ibrahim, he's not letting up at all. It's still the first round. Ibrahim then threw him down on the ground. He walking around the ring, looking at the camera. I'm gonna kill him. Ooh, he doesn't want it. Now, you can hear him taunting Taylor in the ring. This is Taylor's, hey, the big lights, the bright lights. This is when they the hottest. This is when they the brightest. He's in here, he's a little bit nervous. But remember, they were clowning him because his old matches, he was running around. He's just got butterflies. After this first round, he should be able to adjust. Ibrahim cocked back, threw this boy across the room with a punch. Luckily, that fence was there to save him inside the cage because if not, he'd be 10 rows 
up in the audience right now. Back at home, Regis and his mama, just stay down, second round, we can win this money. Ibrahim's in the middle of the ring, like, yeah, stay down, you don't want this. But Taylor, he starts to think about everything going on, and he does want this. He's not giving up. Taylor gets up, he does the Superman punch that he learned, and oh, it's looking bad for Ibrahim. We got him on the ropes now. Oh my goodness, the cage. Oh my goodness, it's going down. Oh my goodness, Taylor might just be able to pull this off. Everyone in the crowd's going crazy. Everyone backstage, they're like, yeah, get him, get him, Taylor. I'm over here watching, oh, come on, Taylor, pull this off, man. Don't go out without a fight. Let's go, Taylor. The only thing, that was short-lived. It was a little burst of energy for Taylor, but towards the end of the round, we got the pop, pop. We got 10 seconds left, and Ibrahim is going crazy. Got him on the ground, pop, 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 pop. He protected himself. Luckily, ding, 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 the bell rings, and Taylor is saved for another round. He was supposed to go down in this second round so his mother and Regis can win, but it's just too much pride, too much ego to go out like that. The third round begins and everyone knows that Taylor has to win this. They going back and forth, but Taylor gets a second burst of win. He's going out there. He doing spinning punches. Oh my goodness, watch out for that one, Ibrahim. The crowd's going crazy, and he got him down on the ground. And I'm talking about boom, 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 boom. He's delivering these blows. Man, it ain't looking good for either side. We know Taylor needs to win right now. Ibrahim went strong the first two rounds. But after this, we got to go and see what the decision is. It's time for the decision. The first referee gives it to Ibrahim. The second referee gives it to Taylor. And the third... They call it a draw. So Taylor doesn't lose and it's actually a draw, which is good for him because guess what? It's not a loss. A draw means, hey, man, it was a good fight. It could have went either way, 50-50. So he's happy, but Ibrahim is upset because this is an amateur fighter and you had a draw with him. You were supposed to knock this guy out, champ. Good job, Taylor. Good job. After both of the lovebirds get back in the back and start talking about their fights, well, they both won. And there's only one way to end on a W, and that's with a kiss. So these two lovebirds are getting closer and closer. They about to be bound by gloves. And the last thing we see is Taylor leaving the ring, and he gets a phone call from his mother. Now, she isn't saying anything, but what we see is a black eye, and that's where we leave episode two. There you go, the recap for episode two of The Cage. Let me know what you think about Taylor. Is he really putting in the work? Is he the real deal? Or did the refs get that completely wrong and Ibrahim was supposed to walk away with another W? Let me know what you think. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for episode 3 of the 3-Day Recap of The Cage on Netflix. I'm ODIJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.